What are wise Nahida's biggest pros and cons? That's what I'm here to tell you today. My name is Juice and let's get into it. First off, I think the most obvious positive quality is the fact that Nahida pretty much is Dendro. She is the complete and full identity of it. There's no beating around the Dendro core here. Chances are that if you want to take full advantage of a character who really appreciates those sorts of teams, the plant kid is the first support that you call to the job. Her dendro application is so absurd to the point where if you're playing an aggravate team, you want to swirl Electro before applying Nahida's marks, because that's how overpowering it is. And if you've ever seen a Nilu Bloom team with and without Nahida's help, yeah, it's funny seeing the comp go turn a small grenade into a nuclear beast. Legit almost all of the Sumeru cast will actively want to utilize Nahida. They saved her in the Archon quest because they knew they'd be missing out on so much team DPS if they didn't. You want to play Alhaitham at his full potential? Then you've got to stick Nahida with him to achieve that. You want to make Nilu Bountiful Core's Bloom feel 20 times better to play? Well, might I just inform you of the one who sees everything? Her usefulness for all Sumeru units genuinely cannot be understated. I will be 100% real with you. If you main either the process of elimination guy, Nilu, Tainari, or Sino, then Nahida is a borderline essential for you. Hold your horses on the cop though, there's another good team for him that's null Nahida. I'll get back to that later. She has a few modern uses outside of Sumeru which really like her dendro application as well. Clorox Aggravate is pretty delicious. There is the issue of Nahida's dendro app being a little overpowering, but if you can swirl Electro before using her skill, then you'll be fine. Mualani Burn Vape teams can also cook with the plant kid. She buffs EM for whoever is on field whenever you've got her burst up, which is incredibly valuable for the shark surfer. She's really good at keeping burning sustained on the enemies, so you'll be vaping for days. Point is, if you need Dendro, Nahida's the one to call. I think one of the biggest positive factors regarding Nahida is that it's absurd how budget friendly she is. People recommend her as a first 5 starter free to plays for a very valid reason, because the cost to make her work is extremely low, and she can form some really cheap teams which are also very resin friendly by not demanding heavy crit stats. Let's take this one at a time. She generally builds EM. Yes, you can build her for personal damage too, but for the sake of the argument, let's talk EM. No crit required. Very easy for a new player to put together. You can easily throw her into a squad primarily composed of 4-star characters, decimating everything in your path for extremely minimal investment both primos and resin wise. Dendro teams are some of the cheapest teams to get up to an abyss clearing standard, so if you're trying to 36 star the abyss as fast as possible as a new player, then the planet kid will be very useful. I think that we're all acquainted with Hyperbloom by this stage, the ultimate team for new players and pure free to plays that want an easy time in the spiral abyss for little to no investment. It's absurd how Nahida completely broke the ceiling when it comes to low investment clears. She can easily drive ahead of a team thanks to being a Dendro Catalyst. Even the main best in salt teams that she plays in are super accessible cost-wise by nature. Nilu teams? Yeah, talents are optional. Stack up on HP% percent and EM for all your teammates, then you're good to go. Alhaitham? Clearing the Abyss excellently on a 3-star weapon, anyone? If you want a character who can seriously unlock the potential of low investment teams, then Nahida is the right pick for you. Her utility is also really handy, because there's more to this kid than her ability to propagate Dendro on enemies swarm disaster style. Her EM share is part of what makes her such a worthwhile buffer for everything Dendro. It's what helps her stay relevant in some modern teams, such as Mualani Burn Vape as a very competent Emily replacement, while being the key to max potential for most Sumeru units. The way that the passive works also rewards building really high EM on other units too. Let's take the Alhaitham team for example. Kuki Shinobu wants to build a ridiculous amount of EM, as she is the main electro trigger of the Dendro cores in this team. If you manage to build 1000 plus EM on her, then Alhaitham, the key on-fielder of a team, will receive a massive EM boost. So the Dendro Archon rewards an economy of building huge amounts of EM in your team, therefore fitting super naturally into EM based comps. Her burst features cool utility depending on the elements that you've got in your team too. Pyro equals Nahida's skill ticks doing more damage, Electro decreases the intervals of her skill ticks, and Hydro extends the duration of her burst which is nice for Nilu teams. It's a small bonus, albeit a bonus nonetheless. If you have at least two teammates that are Pyro, Electro, or Hydro, then these effects get increased further. But with her C1, you can get the two element buff with only one elemental party member which fits the conditions if you happen to stumble upon an additional Nahida copy. Her hidden utility is being able to sustain burning on enemies wonderfully. This is super sick for Ganyu Burnmelt and Mualani Burnfape teams. 
Sadly, she isn't going to have any synergy with Emily, as she sustains burning fine on her own while not really wanting EM sources in her teams. Also, while my videos primarily focus on meta, I'd like to mention the fact that she can gather resources from far away. Overworld convenience is always a big plus, considering the large part that it plays in Genshin. Her C2 is also something else. She already turned Sumeru teams from good to insane. This, however, it's a buff that'll turn your Nilo team into a hydrogen bomb, and as for the Flicker dude, he's already really solid on an Omega cheap build. Now imagine him with C2 Nahida. I'm focusing on those two a lot because I believe them to be the units that receive the most substantial buff from Nahida. Plus, since she's a catalyst, she has access to options which are very good for the whole team. For instance, R5 TDDS or 1000 Floating Dreams. Since Floating Dreams is going to be paired of Staff of Homa this time around, there's pretty much no better time to pick it up. Her utilities are absolutely boundless. You'll find an absolute fountain of value within her base kit with a high investment path that improves all Dendro teams by spades. This is a small positive that I'd like to include, but I really appreciate how comfortably her teams can decimate shields. Cryo shields are pretty much her only weakness. The Inquisitor's Baptist is my least favorite boss of the entire game, and I feel like Nahida's best install teams are able to take care of it wonderfully. It's also funny how she nukes hydro shields if you allow her to on-field when against them. Seriously, these heralds stand no chance against the plant kid and her most favorable comps. Alas, there are still cons to speak of when it comes to this source of all wisdom. For example, her multi-wave is incredibly frustrating. She can apply dendro marks to plenty of enemies at a time, which is very, very good. But if you're playing a character with a super long uptime such as Sino, you either have to cut his uptime short by switching back to Nahida after you've killed the current wave of enemies to apply dendro marks again, or finish your uptime on the next wave of enemies without her dendro marks. It's a complete lose-lose situation, as your multi-wave DPS will fall off astronomically either way. But juice, what if I don't care about Sino? This affects all characters. The only only one who doesn't care is Nilu because her rotations are already kind of goofy. Mualani, have fun still being in her skill after you've defeated the current enemies. Chloriander, have fun still having uptime on her skill after gunning down your enemies. Only the teams where strict rotation isn't employed don't really have a problem with this. Nahida is still very good in all of those teams, of course, but I cannot deny how annoying that gameplay caveat is. You won't come across this issue in boss scenarios, which Abyss has a lot of, so you'll generally be fine, but this is infuriating to deal with in any other type of scenario. I know I might sound like I'm exaggerating right now, but I'm just trying to get across how much I dislike the Dendro Archon's multi-wave capabilities. Another issue with Nahida is that, with the higher investment that your account has, the less and less Nahida starts to matter. Her C2 is a huge breakthrough, but then that's pretty much it. Dendro-based comps have never really been known for their high investment prowess, to be fair, but in the modern age where you have a choice between a C2 Nahida or Farina, the choice becomes pretty clear. I would only choose the Plant Kid's high investment over Fontaine and Notline investment if you're a Nilu or Hythan main. If you're a big whale, then you'd rather turn your gaze to the likes of Nuvelet, Arlecchino, Navia, Lini, or Mualani. Their long-term high investment paths are far more rewarding. But to be fair, I would say that if you really like Dendro teams, then our C2 is certainly still nothing to sneeze at. Sure, there are stronger C2s nowadays, but remember back when Nahida's was considered the golden standard. New metas are always going to introduce stronger damage ceilings in terms of dolphin to whale investment. It's an endless cycle, almost like a samsara that cannot be broken. So if you really like Dendro, then sure, the C2 is worth your time, but not until you've gotten all of the Farina investment that you want first. Newer DPSs and teams are always going to be more worth investing into. I don't think anyone disagrees with me when I say that the likes of C2 Arlecchino or Mualani are unreasonably busted at the moment. I do think that Dendro teams seriously fall off the higher that your investment level gets both Ryzen and Primo gem wise because there's only so far that you can go in terms of pushing the element ceiling. Dendro comps are more of a new or free to play player thing than an old player thing. Yet, with that being said, this C2 is still fantastic if you want your Nilu and Alhytham teams to be at their absolute best. Otherwise, I think you should be saving your high investment for more modern crit-based teams, which are a lot stronger in my opinion. Nahina is also more replaceable than ever in the current age. The only character who I feel genuinely needs the Dendro Archon to not feel like they don't eat their five a day is Nilu. Otherwise, with Sino, the King of Hell team, while it may look and sound silly, is so much comfier in multi-way for the Mahamatra leader. I know that it might seem like a joke, but you would be genuinely surprised at how good this is for him. I actually recommend this over his quick bloom teams in multi-wave situations, as your DPS won't fall off of a cliff with this team in such a case. Especially if your Shepherds is C6. Minus C4 for the record. 
You can also use Baiji over Nahida. Yeah, sure, his buffing won't be as good, but the comfort is definitely there. His heals allow you to use Farina, and he enables my personal favorite Alhytham team. He also feels way less horrendous to play in multi-wave situations. Emily is dominating the burning market right now, and it's pretty much always more worth using her over Nahida in these sorts of teams. She does a frick ton of damage while, once again, not having absolutely horrendous multi-wave. In my personal opinion, I vastly prefer using the Perfumer over the Dendro Archon in the Shark Surface teams. There are lots of viable replacements for Nahida nowadays. You're no longer only locked to her if you're in need of a good Dendro character to support your teams. I'd say that she's definitively best in slot for the older comps that care for the element, but has some proper competition once you move up into modern teams that can use Dendro. And lastly, I don't consider Nahida to be a top 5 pull anymore, because the Fontaine meta and current Not One meta are a lot stronger than old dendro comps. At low investment, they are unbelievably good at what they can do. I would still recommend somebody like Alhytham to a player who wants to clear Abyss as soon as possible, because of how cheap those sorts of teams are to get hitting the ground running. But you've got other low-cost options nowadays, which perform a lot better. You can't tell me that Nouvellet is an expensive unit when Bro decimates the Abyss with a P Amber and 4-piece Ender City Kachino on his side or even an Arlequina with an R5 White Tassel and a full 4-star team that either looks like this or this. I don't think Dendro teams are bad by any means, but the longer that you play the game, the less useful that they become compared to current day teams. Ease of use? Nouvellet, Arlequino. Free to play friendly? Navia's 4-star team. Not one? Use Emily. I consider the golden age of Dendro to have passed long ago. Yes, it absolutely remains as the perfect choice for low investment players that want to start dealing abyss-ready numbers quickly. Its old pros regarding free to play friendliness are 100% still true, but it also 100% has competition these days, which surpass it, while even challenging its role as the best free-to-play option. I think the Nahida aged better than most of the old Archons. Every Archon before her is alright at best, whereas I do think that she is still a top 10 limited 5 star. Top 5 is definitely a stretch, but top 10? Yeah, I can get behind that. Her positive qualities have not really changed over time. All that's really happened, which is not so much in her favor, is the release of better teams. I'd say she's in a very good spot right now. Worth your time if you're interested in the teams that she buffs massively. Otherwise, you can skip the kid quite comfortably. The buffs she gives said teams are not to be underestimated, but if you aren't a Nilu or a Hytham player, then the need for her is definitely not as high. If you main either of those two, then she will be as good as Kazuha or Shilonen is on your account. The extent of her value value truly is a case-by-case -case basis. Either way, you will more than likely be able to find some place for her on your account, but I do believe her to be somewhat of a pull her if you're a low investment player choice more than anything else. Hopefully this video was able to tell you Nahida's biggest pros and cons. This has been Juice, signing out, and remember to eat your five a day.